Greetings, everyone. Uh, I will begin uh, discussing the midterm exam study guide as you prepare for this week um, for the midterm. Or it, um, and so what I would like to do is I'm basically working problems that you requested within the discussion learning activity. And the first problem that has been requested is beginning with problem three. So let's begin there, please. Okay, so the direction tells us to divide and express in standard form. So first things we need to understand when we're dealing with um, here, for one, a complex fraction, um, and then we're dealing with irrational numbers with I, we always begin with the conjugate, okay? So with conjugate, uh, we pay attention to the denominator in the fraction. And the conjugate is always the opposite of the denominator. So that is something that we will be attentive to. So it's always the opposite of our denominator. So what I simply mean is if we look at our denominator of nine minus four, what is the opposite? The opposite of nine minus four will become nine plus four. So that is the opposite and is the conjugate that we will, uh, I should have made that, multiply the denominator by. So we would then take nine plus four i and times that in the denominator as well as the numerator. So we will do a sidebar and let's multiply that out, okay? So let's take a moment and let's do a sidebar and show nine minus four i times nine plus four i. All right, so let's pause and let's calculate that. Okay, so as we see, we distribute nine times nine, that result is 81. And then we will show nine times positive four I will give me a positive 36 I. And then we will show nine times negative four I, that will give me not a positive, but a negative 36 I. And then we realize that negative four times a positive four, that result will come out as a negative 16. And then I times I, let's talk about that. That will become I squared. And we should know that the equivalent of I squared is calculated as the result of a negative one. So I square is the same as negative one. So please make that mental note uh, onto your formula page so you will not forget that Q, that when you see I square, when you do I times I is always equal to a negative one. So now we have, is understood to be negative 16 times negative one, and that result will come out as a positive 16. So we know that will align with 81. So there I will show a negative 36i, positive 36i, those will cancel out. <clears throat> and so now we will simply calculate here 81, uh, plus 16, and that result will become 97. So there we realize that our denominator is now 97. Okay. So now what will occur, we will do a sidebar for the numerator. So let's pause again and let's do a sidebar share uh, uh, work in the numerator. 
All right, so next we know we get, once again, we get nine times nine. That result is 81. Then we show nine times four I for a positive 36 I. Then we continue the process to show eight I times nine. That's for a positive 72 I. And then we continue with here, eight times four. That would give us a positive 32. And then we realize here that the I times I will equal, once again, I squared. And I squared, once again, becomes the result of a negative one. So that leaves me with 32 times negative one, and that will become a negative 32. So once again, I do see that I will have 81 minus 32. And that result is 11 minus 2 is 9, 7 minus 3 is 4. So that becomes 49. And then I will combine and look at my middle terms, 36i and 72i will give me a result of 108i. And that is a positive. So now we just simply write in standard form. So standard form will be separating the fractions, 49, over 97 plus 108i over 97. Final answer. Final answer. Okay, as we progress and move on with our discussion, let's be attentive to problem number um, six, seven, and eight. Those were requested. And what we're doing here is given the conditions, we're gonna write the equation in slope intercept form. So let's go and discuss that in more detail. And let's look at six, seven, and eight. As we begin with number problem six, it says for that the slope is equal to two and it passes through the point seven, six. So first thing we need to do is talk about the formulas that relates to slope. Now here to your right, this is again, great formula page information to write these on your formula page this week as you build it and the point slope form which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and that's what we're going to use for number six talk about the slope define the slope of a line is where the slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then the slope intercept form is identified as y equals mx plus b. And then these are the relationships of parallel line versus perpendicular lines. Parallel slopes are basically equal to one another. One slope equals is the same, they're the same. Perpendicular slopes, however, if the slope is given, it's gonna be the negative reciprocal, one over m. So that is something that you need to be attentive to as well as when you have a parallel line versus a perpendicular line, the slope is what counts. So we'll look at that. Um, so versus me working six, seven, and eight, what I plan to work for you is problem um, six, eight, and I will also work problem 10, okay, in these models. So that's what I will work to demonstrate for you. But however, here at six, we already know the information that is given that we know that the slope is two. So let's make reference of that. 
M standing for slope, and it tells us that the slope is two. And then we also know that the seven is the X being represented, and the six represents the Y. So rel actually, we'll call this the X1 and the Y1. So that is how we will plug those in. So we begin the process with Y minus, and then we know it'd be Y minus what's Y1? Six. M, what is M? Two times X minus what is X1? Seven. And the first thereafter, I'm just simply solving. And my goal, as they told us, to put it in slope intercept form. So I want to write it in slope intercept form. So first things first, let's distribute two to X and two to seven for two X. 2 times 7 will give me 14. And then I will then know I have y minus 6. So I'm going to actually add 6 to both sides. And so I have y equals 2x minus 8. Final answer. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Technical issues. 2x minus 8. And that is y equals mx plus b. And that is the slope intercept form. We can tell from the model, it matches up. So that is my final answer y equals 2x minus 8. So first things first, let's begin by problem eight, where it says passing through negative six, negative four, and negative, I'm sorry, passing through three and three, five and two. So let me make that notation. All right, so first things first here, passing through three, three, and five, and two, is that we must recognize and identify the points to solve for our slope, which is m. So therefore, I've labeled accordingly x1 is 3, x2 is 3, x y1 is 5. So here, x1 is 3, y1 is 3, x2 is 5, y2 is 5, and we will now put those in the equation. So here, we realize from that that we will come up with y2 is 2. So it will show 2 minus y1, which is 3. So we know that says equal 2 minus 3 over x2 is 5 minus x1 is 3. So given 2 minus 3, we know that result is a negative 1, and 5 minus 3 is 2. So we know our m is equal to a negative 1 half. So we will then apply the point slope form. So let's set that up. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And so there we realize here that we will basically just take the first two points and show Y minus three. equals m will now become a negative one half mm -hmm. times x minus three. So my first move is to simply distribute negative one half throughout. So that equation, that size, so I'm gonna have negative one half and then negative one half times a negative three, two negatives make a positive. And so that'd be negative one half, I'm sorry, one half times three over one, which is gonna become three over two. So we got negative one half X and a positive three over two.
So now we realize that we must now take and add three over to the other side. Now, by adding three to the other side, we then need to take three and make it out of halves. We need to make it to a fractional part. So I realize by three over one, I need to multiply by two to determine whatever the denominator is, that's what I multiply the whole number by. So three times two will give me six. So that is my new fractional part for three whole, six over two. So now I will simply add six over two to both sides. And now I have my final answer. Y equals negative one half X plus six plus three is nine over two, nine halves, final answer. Okay, so 10 state for us to passing through um, 3, 3 and perpendicular to the line whose equation is negative 8x plus y minus 9 equals 0. And they want us to state that in slope intercept form, which we know is y equals what? mx plus b. Okay, so first things first is that we need to understand that here we need to begin the process by taking negative 8x plus y minus 9 and let's set that up into slope intercept form let's begin there okay so first things first let's add 9 to both sides Okay, and that will shift to give me plus nine, okay? And then I will add eight X to both sides as well. So that would give me Y equals, when I add eight X to both sides, that'll also become on the right side. So that'll give me y equals 8x plus 9, okay? So now we have that in slope-intercept form. But, however, we have not considered that it's passing through points 3 and 3 and it's perpendicular to that line. So let's talk about the slope of a perpendicular line, which we just discussed earlier, that the perpendicular line of a slope is the negative reciprocal, okay, of the slope. So that means that our slope is eight, okay? So eight will become for one negative, then what's the reciprocal of eight? One over eight. So that is our new perpendicular slope. So the perpendicular slope because uh, we know perpendicular lines what makes 90 degrees, so that's the symbol for perpendicular. Uh, negative 1, 8 is the slope there. So now we will simply take that a step further for perpendicular lines and show y equals negative 1 over 8 x plus nine. Now, here's the next hiccup to that, is that we're not, we can't no longer use nine because we don't know what is the y-intercept. So what will occur is that we will turn this into the y-intercept, which is B, and now we can use the points three and three to determine what will be our B. So what will happen is that my y will turn into three, equals negative one eight and the x will turn into three and that will allow us to be able to solve for b okay 
So I realize here that I will have negative one eight times three. That will give me a negative three eight. plus B. So there I realized the solve for B, I will need to add here three and a positive three over eight. So once we simply take negative three eighths, add it to the other side, that becomes a positive three eight. Then we must rename the whole number three. The whole number three, we need to convert it to a fractional part. And recall that the denominator is eight. So eight times three would give us 24 over eight. So there 24 over eight plus three over eight will become 27 over eight. And that will now become our B. So 27 over eight is equivalent to the B, okay? So now we have Y in the layout of Y equals MX plus B. The M is simply what we know now, a negative one over eight for the slope, X. And then what is our B? And there our B became a total of 27, a positive, 27 over eight. Final answer. So I hope these problems assist you with the process. Again, create your formula page where you will have the correct formulas and the right procedures that will assist you with being successful on the midterm. All right, let's get busy. Let's get back to that learning discussion activity and let's keep it coming and let's help each other out by participating. If you can share your procedures, let's look at those and let's see and work collectively to be successful in the study guide. Take care, bye.